The Napoli 3 trial was designed to answer a very important question in the treatment of pancreas cancer uh, to evaluate whether nalirafox, which is comprised of nanoliposomal arenatecan, oxaliplatin, infusional 5-FU, and leucovorin, compared to gemcitabine and napaclitaxel, could lead to an improvement in survival for patients who had not had prior treatment uh, for their cancer. So this is a, a question that's been on the table for essentially a decade now, and this is the first trial to definitively show that a quadruplet combination compared to a two-drug combination impacted outcome in all the uh, survival parameters that one evaluates in an advanced disease trial. The Napoli 3 trial was a randomized uh, phase 3 trial. It was conducted in a global context, part in North America, about two-thirds in uh, the world beyond North America, and a percentage of patients were enrolled in East Asia. It was a one-to-one -one randomization for Nalirafox compared to gemcitabine and napaclitaxel, and the key eligibility criteria were untreated metastatic pancreas cancer, age 18 or higher, performance status of ECOG 0 to 1. One could not have had prior treatment except if one had had adjuvant therapy, and that was completed more than a year ago. Primary endpoint was overall survival, and secondarily, uh, progression-free survival, response rates, uh, quality of life, and biomarker analysis. The latter, uh, we're still waiting data on. The important outcomes of this study were that the primary endpoint was MESS. And I'll just make note of that because that's not a common occurrence in pancreas cancer. And in this study, the uh, median overall survival was 11.2 months compared to 9.1 months for patients with untreated metastatic pancreas cancer, hazard ratio of 0.83. So again, statistically significant and most, more importantly, clinically meaningful. Secondary endpoints were progression-free survival that was also met with a hazard ratio of 0.65 in terms of progression-free survival. So that was a substantive. There was a numerically increase in response rate for nalirafox compared to gemcitabine and napaclitaxel. So for the, the side effect profiles of each uh, regimen, it was as you might expect based on the composition of the regimen. So for gemcitabine and napaclitaxel, main side effects were hematologic uh, toxicity, so myelosuppression, anemia, thrombocytopenia, and uh, neutropenia. And for nalirafox, it was more gastrointestinal toxicity, so more nausea, vomiting, uh, diarrhea, and hypokalemia. Relative to other studies, you know, somewhat lower rates of neuropathy, and that, that might relate, at least in the nalirafox arm, to the use of a lower dose of oxaliplatin, it was 60 milligrams uh, per meter squared. Grade 3 neuropathy rates were, relatively speaking, acceptable compared to, to other uh, studies. How do we utilize this information and what does it mean for the patient in front of us? So to, to me, I think it's clear that for a patient who is a good functional status, who is untreated metastatic disease, a combination regimen of oxaliplatin, arenatecan, and 5-FU is superior to gemcitabine and apaclitaxel, and that's the, the go-to regimen. We're awaiting a regulatory review of nalirafox, so it's not yet uh, available in terms of immediate day-to-day -day practice. The implications of this trial are, are practice, uh, changing your practice endorsing in uh, pancreas cancer. I'll just also make the note that this is the first you know, positive phase three trial that we've seen in this space in a decade outside of a maintenance setting, which applied to a relatively small group of biomarker selected uh, individuals. This is a you know common and important question is why is this disease so uh, challenging? And I think we don't have a straightforward answer for that, but a number of considerations are firstly, there's no you know early detection, there's late presentation 
patients tend to have metastatic disease at presentation. In some senses, it's a genomically complex disease with a lot of heterogeneity, but in other senses, it's relatively homogeneous and that we see you know, almost ubiquitous KRAS, to a lesser extent, P53, SMAD4, and CDKN2 mutations, which to now have been considered unworkable. That's changing. And, you know, we're in the era of RAS therapeutics, so there's, you know, a lot of hope that that's going to impact outcome. Some of the other factors are that histologically, it's a, it's a very hypovascular tumor. It has this sort of dense stromal matrix, and it has an immune suppressive microenvironment. And all of these, to a greater or lesser degree, may impact why it's so challenging. But at the same time, I just want to, you know, make sure our viewers are aware that that things are changing and the results of the Nellera Fox trial uh, speak to that, that uh, we have some new options. We're looking to identify more targeted uh, subsets of patients where we can select a particular treatment and, and that has not been the context for, for a long time, but we're, we're getting there in, in pancreas cancer. Mm -hmm.